time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and I'm here with Mr. John Bach, the CEO of Puget Systems. Now, Puget Systems is a custom system builder that's about an hour's drive from my house, which I thought was really fascinating. If you guys didn't see the video where we toured the whole facility, you owe it yourself to see that. There's a link down in the video description, but I'm gonna let John tell you just a little bit about Puget Systems and what they're all about. All right, yeah, so we've been in business 15 years, and we make really high-performance computers, workstations, servers, laptops, and we focus on reliability, yep. and we really like to make quiet computers. Yes, there's definitely an emphasis on quiet. If you didn't see the original video, these guys, they build custom brackets and do a lot of R&D to figure out how to position fans so that they can run them at their absolute lowest RPM, producing the least amount of noise. So I'm really stoked to be working with them. They agreed to do a system build for the Nerd Cave. So this is gonna be the next beast that's gonna get the Nerd Cave through the next year, maybe two, maybe three. This thing's pretty beast mode. Yeah, yeah. So guys, hang in there. We're gonna show you what we're building. All right guys, so we're in here in a conference room at Puget Systems and we have all the parts for this build laid out and there's quite a few of them. And for you guys that don't know the specs on the system, uh, we kind of decided to go a little bit of a different direction with this one. And it's everybody was like, build the liquid cooling gaming machine, build it, build it, build it. I want five Titan black editions, blah, 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 blah. We decided to go a little bit different direction because now that I'm producing a YouTube channel and everything, it's every bit as important to me that I'd be able to edit videos and I'd be able to process content that's all just as important as being able to play games and do all the software development and everything that I do. So, we decided to go the workstation route. Yeah. So John, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we have on the table here and why we have it on the table and why this is going to be the most badass computer okay. ever. Yeah. So we're building a dual Xeon workstation mm -hmm. with Intel E5 series uh, V3, so Haswell EP. Uh, so we have an Asus motherboard to, to house the two processors. Uh, we're using six core, pretty high frequency processors. Yep. So it's not a huge core count, uh, but that'll still do really nicely at the rendering. And I did get some people that were coming back and saying, why did you opt to go for like the six cores well, versus the other one? Because there's still a lot of things that, yeah. that aren't really well multi-threaded, like gaming. And, and so <laughs> having sure. a high, high frequency uh, processors will just mm -hmm. make that still pretty conducive for gaming on the side. No, no, I agree. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is a workstation, but obviously you have the, the two 980s over there, and that'll be really nice for... Yeah, these kind of, these kind of give, give you the gaming edge Yeah, right here. It's, a, it's kind of funny because like you see, usually you see a workstation like this and you're going with like a high-end quadro card or something like that's a CAD capable card and of course for our purpose it's like these are a ticket for gaming right here the system is going to be more than capable but and you know, you're still if you're in like premiere rendering a video these will still do absolutely CUDA acceleration for that oh god if I couldn't use the CUDA acceleration I'd be I'd be screwed on my current yeah. system oh my gosh but this will this will be a good challenge for us because mm -hmm. like we said before we're, we're all about making quiet computers yeah and you came to us and we wanted to build this really high-end system and we said well we want to make it really quiet we think we can do it quieter yes with air cooling, and obviously there's a lot less maintenance when, when you're air cooled as oh, well. Oh God, tell me about it. Uh, but you know, these days, a lot of these components, when you're running at idle, when it's just sitting there in the room, we, yep. can, we can turn off a bunch of the fans, we can really ramp this down, mm -hmm. and then we can build the air capacity in there. So when you're rendering, when you're churning uh, videos for hours on end, or hopefully minutes on end. Minutes on <laughs> end. <laughs> uh, then we can really ramp up the fans and kind of uh, deal with all the thermal that uh, comes from that. No, no, that, that, that's actually exactly what I'm after. But John actually touched on a cool point there, and that's when we first started this conversation. The email that I sent to John went somewhere along these lines. I want tubing and pumps and, and radiators and, and blow off valves, and I know, it was, it, was, it was a pretty crazy machine that I threw out there, and I remember your response back to me is, I think we can actually build an air-cooled system that's more stable and could even potentially be quieter. It'll be quieter. It'll be quieter than liquid. Yeah. Quieter than liquid cooling. Yeah. This is about the edge. This is this is about the cutoff point where, you know, if you were to stack more video cards in there, um, we'd have to make the flip over liquid cooling to be quieter. But we still have enough space with a, with a workstation this size. We have enough space that we can use fans and we can get air where it needs to go without having. The biggest thing you yep. get with liquid cooling is you can get cooling into really tight spaces. Yeah. Move that heat somewhere else and then vent it. But with something like this and with a case of this size, we can do that without liquid cooling. All right, we're going to hold them to that, guys. This is going to be fun. And uh, we'd like to give a thank out to some of the people, uh, thanks to some of the people that are helping us out here. we got Asus, right? They're on board helping us with this build. We have Crucial for all this massive pile of memory down here that we have. Um, and then we have EVGA. we got the power supplies. 
Then we've got our buddy uh, Fractal Josh. Thank you, Fractal Designs, for the uh, what is that? The Define R2. That's the Define XL. Or the XL R2. Yeah, XL. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and of course we've got Intel for the processor. So there are a lot of people pitching in here because they want to see this YouTube channel succeed. So if I blow it, um, I'm gonna feel a little bad. You have like four people out here. I know. That's that's not good. <laughs> all right, well, let's not talk about that anymore. All right, let's get all these components over into the production environment and start slapping them together. Now, the neat thing that we get to do that I, I didn't actually know anything about a couple of minutes ago is I get to monitor the progress of this entire build from the comfort of my home. Because if you go to PugetSystems.com, you can actually monitor your system build. I mean, each little thing that's happening here, you basically get checked off as yeah, you go. Every, everyone back here has a little device yep. and we'll log what we're doing in real time. So you can just sit on our website and hit refresh over and over again and just you'll see- Spam F5. Every time we install a fan or we install a processor, we test something, you'll see it. I'm not even joking. I'm, I'm gonna use that a yeah, lot. A lot of people do. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna camp on that F5 button. All right, well, I'm gonna leave you guys to it. I'm not gonna hover too much. Uh, why don't you guys get the system built? and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Puget Systems, this is William. Hey, what's up, William? This is Jerry Berg. Uh, I know I was just in there the other day, but uh, I just I had to call and check and see if my computer's ready. Could you check on it? Well, let me pull that up here. Uh, looks like it's in production now, and uh, we're hard at work on it. Oh, really? It's not done yet? <sighs> All right. Uh, well, our build time is about five to seven business days, so give us three or four more days, and uh, we'll have it ready for you to pick up soon. All right. Thanks for checking, William. Richard, I can help you. Hey, Richard. Um, actually, I'm I'm used to working with William. Could you get grab him for me? Yeah, sure. I'll go get him. Give All him right. A sec. All right. Thank you so much. Puget Systems. This is William. How may I help you? Hey, William. It's uh, Jerry Berg, your uh, favorite customer. I was just uh, just wanted to give you another little call and uh, see how that how that system's doing. You know? Yeah. It's not done yet. It's almost to quality control, so we're getting close, but. Just have a little bit of patience, we're getting there. <sighs> William, I'm just really excited to get my computer. I just want it now. I just want it, I just want it now. <laughs> Thanks, William. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back here at Puget Systems in Auburn, Washington to finally pick up my beast that they've been building. And this is going to be the first of many videos talking about this computer system is amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on it. So let's go take a look. What is up, John? How's it going? Oh, hold on. I got to ask somebody a question really quick. Here, hold on. Oh, man. Hey, uh, hey, William. Yes, sir. Is my computer ready? It is indeed. Yeah! All right, so here we have Chris and John at Puget Systems. We know my system's ready. Can we finally go through the steps? and figure out what was involved to put this thing together. Will you leave at the end? Maybe. All right, you guys are probably familiar with this place by now from the beginning of the video, but uh, lots happened since then, huh? It has, we've uh, done quite a bit of work and we got your system all ready to go, so I think you're gonna be really happy with it when you see it. Rock on. Well, you guys probably last saw from the time lapse that my system was being built over here on one of these epic benches but it's actually been around the building quite a bit. Everywhere. So why don't you walk me through the steps, kind of take me around here. Where, where's my system been and uh, what horrible, horrible things have you guys done to it at each stage? Well, everything comes in through inventory there at the end, gets put into a bin, sorted to a builder, and it moves over to where it all comes together here. And that's over at the build station. Sweet. Also over there, 
Oscar! Oscar that's my builder right there. So if anything goes wrong, remember that face. Remember, that. remember it. All right, so what, what next? It gets done, goes over to Kyle. He's behind you. That's the install station. All right, so this is like Neo from the Matrix going on right here. Yeah. And you guys said each one, and you got a monitor like on every system. Yeah, so you guys so everything aren't just... lines up with the benches on the side and everything has a dedicated monitor because we want to make sure that while we're running uh, testing and doing installs, there's not any intermittent problems because if you just use the KVM switch, then you're likely to miss intermittent failure. So right. that's why we set it up the way we do. Dude, that's awesome. And it just looks cool. Yeah, I mean, and it's like front and center. That, that's good. That's good. All right, so where does it go from there? Now it's got some software on it. It's, it's gonna presumably working. It's going to get done right. over here. Let's go to QC. This is Josh's world. This is quality control. Come on in. All right. And these are all systems waiting to go through quality control. See, real people touch this stuff, guys. And if you check on the website, you can actually see what's going on through every step of the process. Yeah, that's what Josh is doing over there. So as he uh, clicks through, in fact, every builder that does it, you can see these checklists that are up now. This is all the build checkoff and then all the quality control checkoff that comes there and then they can look at their build online on their account and see all that uploaded in real time. Dude, that's cool. Right, right above it is the FLIR camera output, which we don't have anything fired up right now. But. Well, we do because I just B-rolled over footage of my oh, system hey, actually. See, hey, movie magic, woo! Hey, hey, hey. Yeah! So we have uh, FLIR all set up and two stations so we can QC two at a time. It takes about 30 minutes of touching, poking, prodding, looking at, checking the screw, making sure everything works. About 30 minutes of system, we give it individual attention just to make sure everything's perfect before it goes out. Dude, that's awesome. All right, so now it's been through QC, so presumably it's presumably, it's, it's, it's good. Hey, you know what? It either leaves here and it goes one or two places back to the builder to fix something, or it's gonna um, head over to shipping, so we'll go over there. All right. So this is where we prep for the end. We're gonna take uh, some pictures. We have this computer, this random computer over here. And as you guys can see, they used a laser beam to etch my logo all over this bad boy. And it's even bigger than their little puny logo down there. Look at that. Yeah. Base mode. So we take pictures of the system. It's not only just for you to share with your friends, but it also helps uh, technical support because we'll take the side of the case off, take some pictures on the inside. So if you have to call up our support team, and of course it's lifetime support. So anytime you have a question, as long as you own the computer, we'll help you with it. But it allows them to see kind of the setup because Every system is tuned to an individual's needs. Um, there's a lot of things that are non-standard in the way that we build it. They change from build to build. So having those pictures really help out technical support. We also take a picture of all your accessories. So when you call up looking for the thingamajig, we can tell you it's the white thing in the bag. So that's really that's cool. That's why we do that. Yeah. Awesome. We uh, print out your packet and we put together a binder for you. You'll have, looks like this. And it's got all your stuff in it. It's got how to unpack your system. It's got your owner's manual and all the cords and stuff that you want. We uh, we try to give you a lot of things you're gonna need. We try not to give you absolutely everything. A lot of it just turns into junk, but if you ever need a spare part, you just call us up and we'll ship one out to you. Dude, that is awesome. I am super, super proud to be taking ownership of this beast, beast of a machine. Are you pumped? I am super pumped, dude. All right, guys, well, you've seen the video through the entire process here at Puget Systems of getting this awesome beast of a computer built for the Nerd Cave. And you can see it even has my laser etched logo. That's, I think that's weird that I'm sitting here with this massively awesome computer, and that's what I'm nerding over right now. Like, <laughs> it seems like such a simple thing, but it's like, I don't know, a laser beam, like, carbon. That means it's yours. It, it's right? mine. It's like...
tantamount to me. Uh, actually, I'm not even going to go there, but it, this territory has been marked. I'll just, I'm going to go with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish up right here and talk about all of the planning and everything that went into building this system. The first thing I want to let you guys know is that Oscar here didn't just get handed a pile of parts, throw them in a case, and hand it to me. You know, that's, that's kind of what I, you know, I'd expect most of the time buying a computer. Like, you know, because when I build them, that's how I do it. Um, but, but what actually happened was a lot more here. So what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit with John here. John sat down and we planned this original system, like what I wanted out of it. Um, it was a lot more than just saying, oh, man, I want a really fast computer. Because uh, let's reiterate a little bit. When I started this project, I came to you and I asked for a water-cooled beast mm -hmm. with massive GPUs and a super overclocked i7. And you sat down with me and you're like, what are you going to do with it? And I'm like, well, mo mostly edit videos and, and right. render things right. and run VMs and all the stuff that that system was uh, horribly unsuited for. So ultimately we decided to go a different direction and that's why we're going with an air-cooled Xeon system. And I'm going to let John tell you a little bit about why and the planning that went into putting this thing together. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, a lot of our background, so we've, we've done workstations for a long time and we're really good at making fast workstations for that kind of work. And quiet workstations. And, and that, but that's the other thing. That's yeah. one thing that makes us kind of excited building PCs yep. is making really quiet computers. And so we wanted to showcase both of those things. So we can make a workstation that really, did a really good job of meeting your needs yep. that was nice and quiet, really show that we could what we could do when it comes to us, especially a, a challenging system like this where two Xeons and two 980s yeah. and multiple SSDs and all these things. And we wanted it to be as, as compact as we could and still yep. do a good job, make it nice and quiet and well-cooled. There's a lot of heat in there, <laughs> to, yeah. To, yeah. for sure, that you guys had to deal with. Um, so what, I, what I'd like you to tell everybody a little bit about that I thought was cool is some of the modifications and custom things that you had to do to actually get the airflow through this case right for this. Because those yeah. two 980s are obviously the big contenders for heat in the case. Sure. And you know, a lot of people might look at it and question you know, some of the airflow characteristics and everything, but yeah. a lot of planning went into this. Literally, they tried like every orientation of components, checked thermal heat from both the sensors and the computer, and using a FLIR, which is forward-looking infrared, right? If I'm not mistaken. That sounds it, yeah. yeah, so something like that. I don't know, they put on helicopters and find people running through the streets of LA, that's all I know. But anyways, they got one of them here and they pointed at computers. And so they wanted to find that optimal place to put the components and use the quietest fan possible. Like, actually, you were telling me a little bit about the fans and why these fans were selected, the Noctur. You yeah. want to talk about that a little yeah. bit? Well, I, I, can, I can talk about the, really, the whole thing. It, it, it starts with years ago. I mean, this is... This wasn't like we let's sit down and for the first time build a system like this. That I didn't get that impression at all here. <laughs> Surprising. Uh, so yeah, we have we have years of experience when it comes to where do we put things and what orientation and a lot of it, it we've tested. We've tested all the different iterations mm -hmm. and we go with what the data says. And a lot of people might look at this configuration and think, well. Why would you do? Why would you put the video cards further down? Or why do you have the the CPUs pulling? Welcome from to the internet, there? John. Welcome and, to the internet. Like, there's a person watching this right now, and I already know they're down in the comments. You know who you I are. Would, You're I already down there typing like how the yeah. air flows wrong, yeah. or I how would have, we did. I would have done this differently. And, exactly. And, and and I think the first thing we realize is we we didn't just like let's just try it this way. Like it's done for a reason. Yeah. And and we have experience, and we've done testing, and we have data that says that this is the way that we should do it. And so I guess starting kind of going through it. So first thing somebody might say is, well, why do you have the CPUs pulling hot air from the video cards? And uh, boy, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways we can do this. We yeah. could have oriented both the CPUs blowing backwards. We could have made them go up. We could have one blowing up, one blowing sideways. We could have them blowing at each other. We could have them blowing apart. We've, yeah. tried, we've tried all of those things. And we've, we've tried all those things, even the ridiculous sounding ones, because we want to find out what happens and we learn things when we right. do that. And so what we found is, um, well, first of all, what we want to do is make sure that all of the heat generated here, there's 280 watts of heat coming off the processors alone, and we don't want that heat to get anywhere else. Yep. So we want that heat to immediately go up and come out of the case, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yep. Um, now, we could do that also by blowing both of them back, mm -hmm. but then you have all the hot exhaust from CPU 1, I yes. suppose, uh, getting onto CPU 0, and you're going to have one running a lot hotter than the other. Okay. Um, the other reason why we wouldn't do that is that would be pulling all the, the air from here up front, and we don't have any ventilation. That would just be pulling kind of stagnant air. It's going to get hotter and hotter over time. So even though it seems as if you would be pulling a lot of hot air from the GPUs, we're actually getting some of our freshest intake air from this fan is coming up the side, getting into the CPUs, and then coming out. So mm -hmm. uh, this is the coolest configuration, especially for the CPUs. That's awesome. Um, 
Now, the other reason we did it this way is because the CPUs actually aren't our biggest problem in this build. The biggest problem we have is the video cards. So we want to do as much as we can to cool those video cards. So the first thing we did was space them out. We want to make sure we can actually get airflow in between the video cards. Um, these particular video cards don't vent uh, very much of the air out the back like a lot of the traditional reference yep. designs do. These vent all the heat right back into the case. And the plus side of that is it's a lot quieter. The downside is you have to deal with all that heat again. And so that's why we kind of have this channel system going up where we have fresh air that comes up and the CPUs pull it through and we either vent it out the top or we have this rear exhaust fan to get the air out. Gotcha. Uh, we use Noctua fans that I'm sure a lot of people Oh yeah, they, ner they nerded out over that when I was posting the Instagram pics. Yeah. Everybody and their brother knows that fan. That's, yeah. you know, you can say what you, say what you want to say about the mm -hmm. color, but everyone knows that's not too when you see that color. Yeah, everybody was like, I don't, one guy was like, I don't like the color scheme, right. and like everybody else was like, not too Yeah, ridiculous six year warranty on fans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, crazy. that's awesome. So we use the Noctua fans because it's a really nice balance of quite, they're really quiet fans. Bring them but, they, but they also push a good amount of air. And we could use some different brands of fans and have even less airflow, but for a system like this, we really needed the airflow. Um, some people have also talked about, well, why didn't we use the Noctua industrial series fans, the more black or gray fans? Uh, these are just quieter. Mm -hmm. um, th those are tuned a little bit more on the server side. Yeah. Um, if we needed even more airflow, that would probably be a good place to go next, but we didn't need we had enough yeah. here, and this was this was quiet. And in the quiet room, I mean, this system at idle is dead dead silent. You can't tell if it's yeah. on or not. Um, and you can see the fans turning, zero noise. You can put your ear right up to it. It was only when it was under a load that you could hear a very faint fan noise. Yeah. And even then, even with the full GPU load and everything, I've never heard a GPU that quiet yeah. under load. Yeah, it does. It does pretty good. So and that kind of surprised it, me. One of the nice things about technology today is even if it's drawing every video card 200 watts and every CPU 140 watts at load, they're doing a really good job these days with them taking just a small amount of power idle. And so a lot of things we did in here is make sure the fans ramp or the video cards actually turn all the way off. Yep. The fans turn all the way off at idle. The um, power supply fan turns all the way off at idle. Um, so when a system is idle, it's like the middle of the night, I think that's when you're going to be most sensitive to the noise of the system. Yeah, I think if for you're most like, people. If you're like doing a, a big video render, you're not going to be saying like, well, why do these fans spin up? Like, it makes sense to you that it spins up. So yeah. we, we focus a lot of our time on the idle noise level and try to make that as quiet as we yeah. can. Well, my laptop under load is louder than this system is sure. under load. So I was actually pretty pretty shocked about that. Um, well, what else? Uh, a couple other things to go through is like, where, why did we put the video cards where we did? A lot of people might say, well, why, why didn't you put the video cards oh, down lower? Oh, that's, that's a really good point. I kind of thought that when I first saw it too. I was like, hey, space those bad boys out. Right. But uh, right. why, why, why don't you tell us why they're so close together? Well, there's John. two things we that dictates this. One is we want to make sure they get the PCIe link they need. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, actually in this configuration, even so, you, I haven't told you this yet, the top mm -hmm. one is running at x16, but we actually have the bottom one still running at x8. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done a lot of testing to see, okay, what does that actually do to your frame rates? It's negligible. It's nothing. So don't worry about it. Um, if we were to have them lower, we'd actually have to run both at x8. Um, the other reason we have them where we have them is we wanted to put both of the video cards on the PCIe lanes that are controlled by CPU zero. And if we had the second video card lower, it would jump over to CPU one. And in order to talk to each other, the two video cards would have to go through the QPI link between the, the CPUs and wouldn't be able to talk locally on one CPU. I think we should talk about next, which I think is really cool, is the, is the super little custom touches that make the difference. Like the why you chose 140 million, and definitely yeah. pointing out that this is not the original Plexi that was in this. No, game. yeah, well, so, okay, we can start there. So the, the original Plexi that comes in that side panel is a little bit more of a tan tilt to it, you can't see it through it as much, but it also doesn't etch very well and it doesn't cut very well. So we take it off, we throw it away, we put our, our own acrylic on there. Mm -hmm. uh, that allows us to put the fan wherever we want, absolutely anywhere we want. We can use any different size of fan. So in this case, we ended up using a 140 Noctua. That's actually not standard for us. Normally we use a 120. Mm -hmm. We use a 120 because, hey, you have a window, you want to see through it, let's not have this gigantic fan right. on the side. Uh, we also use 120s normally because they they tend to get the airflow a little deeper into the case. So usually there's like one thing we're trying to cool really well when we do a side fan like this. Yeah. Your system's a little more intense. There's like four things we're trying to cool really yeah. well. So we used a 140 fan. It's a little more diffuse and we can cool more things. The reason we put it exactly where we put it is we want to get airflow in between the video cards. Mm -hmm. We want to get airflow to one of the SSDs down here. And we want to get airflow 
to the second SSD that's down here. I can talk a little more about that SSD. Why don't you yeah. talk about what you had to do to that so, little <laughs> little SSD on the board? Originally, the plan was to put one SSD in between the video cards yes. and another SSD down below. Yeah. And that technically probably could have worked. Uh, but what we found was the uh, it's just, it was just really tight. Um, if this video card, it was fine at first. If this video, the top video card would sag a little bit over the years, mm -hmm. um, it could, the, the fins of the video card. Just too close for comfort. It was too yeah. close. So like it, it was borderline, but we chose not to take the risk. Um, so we put that second SSD actually onto the M2 slot on the motherboard. Mm -hmm. Now that's another thing we don't normally do. We don't normally do that because those SSDs run pretty hot. Right. And we like to have the uh, heat sink that the, we can have on the PCIe card. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we got a little creative and we said, okay, well, let's put it on the motherboard and let's, let's put our own uh, heat sink on it. So we got uh, thermal epoxy out and we were now assuming the warranty risk on that SSD, uh, but we put it down there and that allows us to cool it with a side fan. We've looked at it under thermal imaging. It's doing an awesome job, nice and cool. And now we have all the space in between the video cards. We don't have to worry about any of those clearance issues. So it's like literally no, no detail went untouched on this. You know, that, that, that's the thing I think is really cool about this is it's easy to look at something like this and think, okay, it's just a bunch of components just thrown together. But it's not. I mean, you guys did the testing to find out that you did have hot spots that you had to deal with. You had to put things in certain configurations to get the lowest possible thermal load and keep the system as quiet as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of thought that went into this. And especially like on the side, I mean, like the little details like etching into it and actually replacing this piece just so you can reposition the fan. I mean, these might all seem like little things, but they're really not. I mean, it's the culmination of all the research that goes into this for each one of the systems that you build, with the ultimate goal being to make them really, really efficient and quiet. And it was a challenging system. I mean, if you'd removed one piece from any of this, it would have made life a lot easier. One less video card, one less SSD, one less It was video. supposed to be challenging. This is like this. <laughs> and that's for the point. Like, we has got big shoes to fill here, Oscar. I'm just saying. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, this is definitely challenging. And, and going back to dual CPU setups got me just giddy. Like, mm -hmm. uh, last time I had a dual CPU computer was back when I had a dual Celeron 300A overclocked to 450 megahertz. Like, you're megahertz. Mm -hmm. and, and I absolutely love that system. So this, this is going to be fantastic. I want to thank you guys a ton. Oscar, thank you for not screwing this up and doing an awesome, awesome job. I actually know how much work went into this thing. I F5'd the hell out of the website and watched everything you were doing every step of the way. And John, thank you so much for working with me and my channel. I'm really, really looking forward to working with you guys. It's been great. Uh, this, this has been a fantastic experience. And sitting over there behind the camera, Mr. Chris, he's been an all right guy to work with. I mean, I'm not going to say like, you know, the best, but you know, it's, you don't, you don't pick them. But, uh, but you know, overall great experience. I got a new computer. It's going to last me for a couple of years and it's got my logo on it. And Fractal Josh, you're probably going to be happy that you finally got me to use one of your cases. Hey, what's hey. going on? Welcome. This is Puget Systems Support. We do all our support and repair right here in our Auburn facility. We keep it all in-house, so when you call, you're uh, going to call right here to the facility. You're going to talk to one of our employees so we don't outsource our repair. We don't outsource our support. All of our systems come with lifetime um, support and labor. So if you have any work that needs to get done, the whole labor side's on us. That's just part of the deal. That is so awesome. We do it We do it right here, um, and this is where all the magic happens. Fantastic. So if you call the number, you're probably going to get one of these gentlemen. And uh, when they're not playing solitaire, Minecraft, you're probably going to get a good answer. I say probably. I don't know. I don't see a single Minecraft running here. I'm starting to question your support team. I don't know if it's legit, but this is what we got. Hey, so William, uh, I finally got my computer and uh, I'm going to be on my way. Awesome. This isn't the last you've seen of me. Darn. Not, not but that, that, that sounded kind of bad. Really? Really? Oh, man. Oh. 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 Why? Why? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.